I'm Amanda. I'm an artist from Vancouver and I love art journaling. If you've clicked on this video, you're probably interested in art journaling. I've done it over the past couple of years, so here's a few things that I've learned. I've made over 30 journals, so I think I've learned a thing or two. So whether it's about the journal you choose, the style, or even the vibe, let me teach you a thing or two about art journaling. This is my first art journal that I ever made. I started it in 2017 and it took me three years to complete. It's a rough journal, but it's very special to me. And of course it wasn't gonna be perfect since it was my first try. Also, if you want to look through my journals with more detail, I have flip throughs of all of them up on this channel that are ready for you to watch. Well, that one rough journal turned into 30 plus more journals. I still continue to love art journaling to this day and I don't think I'll be slowing down anytime soon. If you've been following me for a while, you know that I love these Muji journals. They're a size A6. I haven't been able to find them recently, but I have been able to find a similar version of these off of Amazon. So if you are looking for a size of an art journal to start with, I highly recommend using an A6 size journal. The smaller size just really helps to fill up pages. Another style of art journaling that I like to do is called daily art journaling, where every day I fill up a page and I usually write something along with it to accompany it. I find it to be a really great way to express yourself through words and through visual forms. This size journal that I'm using is A5, and I was able to get these black hardcovers from Michaels. And this leads me to my first lesson. Regardless of whether you use really cheap products or really expensive products, always work with what you have. Utilize everything, whether it's scraps or receipts or a random journal that you have lying around, a blank notebook. You can always use an art journal and be thrifty with it. It really is more about what's inside than what is on the outside. When I use cheaper materials, I feel like I can take more risks in my art because if I end up making a mistake, it's okay because I didn't spend too much on it. So if you are able to become a little bit of a pack rat, keep your scraps, keep your tickets, keep your little mementos because I feel like it makes things way more personal and it contributes to the memory of your journal. Continuing on keeping things personal, I want to talk about my second lesson, which is don't make things for others, make things for yourself. Journaling is for you. When I first started art journaling, I was very focused on creating pages that I think others would like. I was very focused about what my friends would think about my pages or what they would talk about if they ever saw my pages. But in reality, your pages are for you, your journal is for you, so you should always just create for yourself. I talk about this a lot, but journaling is a lot more about the process than the final page. It's about self-expression, and a lot of it is more about how you feel while making the page than what it looks like in the end. I always like to see art journaling as mini stories of my life. It does require a little bit of vulnerability to be able to share them with others. So if you choose to do so, embrace the mistakes you make, embrace the stories that you are writing, and be proud of them. And that leads me to my next lesson, that not everything you make you will like, you will actually probably hate most of it. I'm saying this as a way to encourage you to let go of your expectations that every single page you make needs to be good, because in reality, maybe like one or two pages that you make in a journal you will really like and enjoy and a lot of them will actually probably frustrate you but that leads to problem solving that leads to learning to like your mistakes learning to improve on your mistakes so that you can create pages that you are really proud of and really enjoy i think some of my favorite pages have been made when i trust my intuition and i rely on the skills that i've been practicing over time Trust me when I say that to get to those good pages that I like, I've had to make double the amount, maybe even triple the amount of pages that I've absolutely hated. That's why I do journals like my daily art journal, because if I do make a page that's not my favorite, it's okay. I can just turn the page and the next day I'll try something new. I think art journaling can be a great way to practice patience and self-discipline because as someone who wants things to be perfect all the time and to come really easily to me, I've learned through art journaling that it does take time and it does require practice and repetition to get the desired results that you want. And one of the great things about art journaling and just art in general is that you're constantly growing, you're constantly learning. So 
so you're always going to be making mistakes, so you should always embrace that. And this leads me to my last lesson, which is try everything. Whether it's different styles, different mediums, different supplies, just be open to whatever might come your way. Art is a skill, and we all know that in order to improve on our skills, we need to practice. But if you're practicing the same thing all the time, it might get repetitive and it might get boring. So try new things in order to find inspiration. One way that I like to do this is by having themed journals where I'll give myself restrictions to force myself to kind of find creative solutions to fill up my journals. I've done journals like photos only journal, writing only journal, maybe only using one color for an entire journal. And that lets me just be more creative and kind of find like new ways to make my pages. I also see a difference in my journaling when I journal every day, for example, or if I take a very long break in a journal. You can tell like with sports, if you don't practice for a while, you can see things starting to go away. And I can definitely see that as well in my journaling. Sometimes I'll even make an entire journal for experimenting. I'll make it a themed journal where I just try new things and if it looks ugly, that's the theme of the journal. I know sometimes we think that journaling should be fun all the time, but I think journaling is a way to push yourself and to... Honestly, sometimes journaling has to suck, but you will learn stuff and you will find what you like and what you don't like and that can lead to further development in your artistic practice. Something that I like to do is go back and look through my early journals because I always see an improvement. I can see now that through all that practice, I am developing my style, I'm finding what I enjoy to do, and sometimes the pages aren't great, but I can see that they were useful in figuring out who I am today. So there's my words of wisdom for all of you. I hope you learned something. I hope you take some of it to heart. I know that I've learned so many things from art journaling over the years. I'm very happy that I started this practice. I feel like I always learn something with every journal that I make. I love how journaling is something that grows with you. If you give to your journal, it will give something back to you. Who knows, maybe after I finish 60 journals, I will have learned a whole other new batch of lessons, and I look forward to that. I love that as we grow, our art style also changes. Things never stay the same. We're always constantly changing ourselves, and that is also reflected in our art. So that's why I really love journaling, because it's a way of recording these changes in your life so that you can look back and see them as memories or reflect on them and see how they've impacted your life. So after all of this talking, my one big wish is that I hope you continue to art journal or even start an art journal if you haven't already. I know that it's something that I love to do and I hope you give it a try. As I mentioned before, this channel is filled with lots of flip throughs so you can look through those journals to find inspiration. And if you have been someone who's been around for a while and seen my journals and my flip throughs, you've stuck around, thank you for being here. I appreciate your comments and your recreations of my journal pages. I can't wait to see what we make in the future. So once again, thanks for watching this video. I hope it gives you some inspiration and I'll see you in the next one.